Hi, this is my review of the Iron Kingdoms Unleashed RPG Core Rules. Iron Kingdoms Unleashed is a fantasy role-playing game that has elements of, of savagery, of steampunk, of um, dark sorcery, and just a very raw, very uh, primal instinct of survival. Well, let's talk about the quality of the PDF first. The PDF is just massive. It's 481 pages. Uh, there are so many cool illustrations and the overall graphic design is just awesome. The, the page layout is decorated and, and you kind of get the feeling that you are reading some sort of, of shamanic tome or, or talismanic book of some sorts because it's decorated with bones and amulets and talismans and uh, it's very cool. And everything is very well organized and you have a virtual table of contents, you have bookmarks, you have an index, you have a very cool looking character sheet and um, templates for area of effect damage and uh, some walls for terrain. Everything's very well done. Uh, however, I think the map included with the PDF could have been uh, improved. It's not at a, at a very high resolution, so even if you zoom in, you won't be able to read some of the, the places and the entries. And well, let's talk about the content of the PDF. First, you, you get 100, about 100 pages of, of pure campaign setting. And the campaign setting is very exciting. It feels very... Mm, well, you see, in the Iron Kingdom's uh, Full Metal Fantasy RPG, you, you uh, got this sense that all the wars that happened there uh, had to do with uh, political intrigue and all sorts of uh, subtle maneuvers and city-based adventures. However, here in the Iron Kingdoms Unleashed, everything feels very tribal, like it's a constant struggle for survival and protecting your, your own uh, terrain and conquering other uh, zones. Mm, you also get the feeling that, uh, that if there are, um, there are some alliances, it's alliances because of, of convenience and you are going to be backstabbed or you will probably have to backstab someone else before they do that to you so everything feels very you know it, it has that strong sword and sorcery feel to it. it it's, it's all very well done and you get a lot of information you have information about uh, the different cults organization um, economy the different uh, philosophy and features of each culture and each region so, and you get a lot of small plot lines, like, you can easily create adventures and campaigns just by uh, picking one random paragraph in the campaign setting, and you will be able to, to build an entire story with all of that, with different clashes between organizations and tribes. Everything's very well done. Now, to interact with this campaign setting, you will need to create characters, of course. Well, let's talk about character stats first. You have uh, primary stats, which are basically th um, stats that um, you get uh, secondary stats from them. You have uh, physique and agility and intellect. And from physique, you get speed and strength. From agility, you get pose and, and prowess. And from intellect, you get arcane and perception. And from these stats, you get derived stats, which are defense, initiative, armor, and willpower. At first, it, everything seems a bit complicated, but it's actually really simple. Because uh, when you make any kind of check, maybe it's a skill check or uh, you're making an attack, you just uh, roll a couple of six-sided dice and you add a couple of modifiers and that's it. Sometimes, because of different effects, you may roll more than two six-sided dice or, or less, it depends. But well, everything is very well explained and from these uh, stats you get the life spiral which I will get into when I talk about combat and it's kind of like um, your character's health, your overall health but it's a bit more uh, deeper, it's deeper than that. Well, now let's talk about uh, the steps to create your character. First you have to choose your race and there are a lot of monstrous races in this, in this game. And they're pretty cool. If you like playing as monsters, this is the game for you. For example, you have the bug truck, which are bug trucks are aggressive, greedy, and such humanoids dwelling in the swamps and marshes of western Imorin. So they have that look like a combination of of fish man or, or lizard man at the same time, and they are very good at swimming and at integrating with the environment. They're very stealthy. 
and then you have the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh are an opportunistic and hardy race of boar men that has thrived on the fringes of civilization for centuries. And they're kind of like boar men and they are very resistant to disease and because of their, their large noses they're very good at tracking or detecting things based on, on smell. And then you have the gator men. And gator men are bipedal uh, reptiles endowed with formidable natural weaponry. Gator men are, are primal hunters who dwell in deep swamps and along remote rivers, dominating any area they inhabit. And these are my favorite ones because they are very powerful. In they are like powerhouses. They are very good at close combat. They have very tough skin. They, they have a powerful bite. They, they are pretty impressive. And then you have the, the humans, and now the humans are very adaptable and flexible, and they're kind of like at odds living uh, um, here in, 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 in this wild and savage campaign setting because they are quite different from the other mon more monstrous races. But as I was telling you, at least that they are quite skilled and they have a bit more flexibility when you are assigning this, their stats. And then you have the knees, and the knees feel like very tough elves. They are the proud but greatly diminished elven race that once inhabited the frozen north amid the imposing peaks of the shard spires. And they are very well uh, uh, good combatants. They specialize in the use of bow and claymore. Now uh, you have the pygmy trolls. The pygmy trolls are pretty cool as well. Pygmy trolls or pigs have long existed at the fringes of Troll King society. These clever diminutive cousins of full blood trolls live in tribal groups, often near Troll King villages. Now the cool thing about this, this race is that if they chop off your arm, your arm will kind of like regenerate and transform into a sort of like an animal companion. And, and these are called uh, spawn whelps, they have their own stats. So if uh, the enemy hurts you, in, in a way that uh, he's going to sever a part of your body, you're going to have an instant ally. And then you have the Tharn, and the Tharn are kind of like shapeshifters. They are bestial, devourer, worshipping savages, closely rela related to humans. However, they, they assume this powerful shape. In, uh, they, they're kind of like lycanthropists in other, in other games, and, and they have augmented stance when they uh, turn into uh, that, that shape. Mm. And then you have Trollkin, and Trollkin are a strong, hardy, and tradition-minded people, renowned for their tenacity and resilience. And these are more like trolls, and they have a limited regeneration uh, ability, and they're pretty tough. And after you, after you choose your race, uh, you choose archetypes based on, on that race, and, and uh, that race choice of, of archetypes. So your character is probably cunning, or gifted, or mighty, or skilled, and everything uh, has an effect on gameplay and maybe in different skill checks or combat for example gifted characters are the only ones who can use uh, ma magic of different uh, disciplines and then you have to choose two careers and this is where it gets really cool you have a, a bunch of, of careers and by combining those two careers it feels like you're creating your own original career and there are a lot of customization options and there are, there are quite a few careers, so I'm going to read just a few of them because there are just too many careers. And well, first, for example, you have uh, the Archer. And the Archer is a master of, of bow, and you have abilities such as adjust aim, blur of motion, dual shot. And uh, you also have Archer abilities such as adjust aim, blur, uh, crack shot, mm, dual shot, fast draw. It's, it's all very, it's very cool to, that you can combine things because uh, just by itself this class may not seem as, as flexible but when you combine it with, uh, let's say, um, black clad, although I have to check that because uh, there are certain restrictions to the combinations uh, you can achieve. The black clad uh, is a group of humans that feel like dark druids and they have a lot of abilities based on, on that uh, sort of sorcery. So they have... Um, uh, artificer, um, artificer uh, disease, resistance, uh, dominating presence, immunity to corrosion, immunity to electricity, they are long-lived and of course they have these powerful uh, spells that could serve as, as offensive and sometimes in a uh, uh, support kind of way. You also have uh, the blood weaver. Blood weavers practice ancient blood filled magic that enables them to manipulate the energies of life and death. So they, they slightly feel necromantic 
One thing that I've noticed of these uh, different careers is that they have a strong necromantic feel to them. A lot of their abilities are um, empowered by manipulating the forces of life and death. And you can create on undead, undead uh, creatures. And uh, in the case of the Blood Weaver, you have uh, abilities such as Blood Rites, Empower Weapon, uh, Blood Spiller, Blood Trade, etc. Another cool career, for example, is the uh, with a strong necromantic feel is the Bokor, and you have to be a Gator Man to, to and, and a gifted Gator Man to access this career. And Bokors are the ruthless mystics and shamans of the Gator Men. Most revere the great swamp spirit Kosk and call upon his power in the dark rites. And you have abilities such as uh, Great Power, Death Mastery, Ghost Sight, Grave Man, Grave Great Power. There are so many cool careers. There's a career called the Bone Grinder, the Brigand, the Bushwalker, the Chieftain. The Chieftain is pretty cool, it's a very uh, leader oriented campaign, the, uh, sorry, in a career. And then uh, the Fell Color, the Fen Blade, the Krill Champion. And just uh, think about it, you can combine, mix and match uh, all the different careers. And I think that for both uh, role players and, and power players alike, they're going to get a lot of enjoyment exploring the different career options. And well, now let's talk a, a bit more about uh, how you can empower or advance with different uh, careers. You obviously get experience points and you may uh, spend these experience points, you have like a little uh, list of the things that you can purchase. So your character is going to reach an epic level you, st you may start uh, feeling maybe a bit underpowered at first, but when you reach a peak level, you feel like a force to be reckoned with. And uh, you can uh, form adventuring companies. Your your party could very well be just uh, a group of, of random races thrown in together, but if you follow a specific theme, you're going to get some bonuses when you play the game. So for example, let's say you choose the Gatorman Drive Adventuring Company. The characters are members of a Gatorman tribe that may include characters of other races who have aligned themselves to the tribe or have been enslaved by them. So you have that requirement, uh, but you get uh, different benefits uh, when it comes to uh, swimming, tracking, and deception and intimidation. And you get so many cool abilities. Uh, you have a, a pretty big list of different abilities that, that you can use to customize your character such as Acrobatics, Adjust Aim, Advisor, Aegis, Ambush, Ar Arcing Shot, uh, Artificer, Battle Commander, um, Bayonet Charge, Expert Rider, Fallback, Hack, Headbot, Renown, Sniper, you have a lot of abilities. And when it comes to skill, as I was telling you, it's very simple to make a check here, you just uh, roll a couple of six-sided dice and you add some modifiers and, and you try to, to roll the, uh, at a target difficulty or above that. Now when it comes to the game, it achieves a nice balance of non-combat encounters and combat encounters. There are going to be uh, a lot of opportunities for uh, diplomatic encounters and interaction with different NPCs and exploration and moving across um, different uh, types of dangerous terrain and avoiding hazards and traps but I, I think the coolest part of Iron Kingdoms Unleashed and well it's to be expected because this this game is based on the popular war game of, of War Machine and Hordes more specifically it's on the Hordes side of things well, well combat is very well defined here this is a game that works excellent with miniatures you have a lot of, of cool rules to uh, move miniatures around on a board and maybe even if you uh, don't have terrain pieces uh, you can very well simulate an entire battlefield with this you have rules for facing, line of sight and uh, ways to, to measure the distance, how this distance is affected by the different terrain you have uh, different actions, uh, for example you have very uh, good and uh, how I would call it, um, streamlined grappling rules because grappling rule, rules are sometimes very cumbersome in many games but here it's, it's all very intuitive, you just make a, an unarmed attack and, and if you hit, you grapple the opponent you have different uh, options such as taking cover, making attacks declaring targets um, and you get um, 
these points that uh, work kind of like bennies or, or fate points in other games and they are used to activate different abilities and these points could be awarded by the game master or when you kill enemies and they're quite uh, they're uh, a bit more flexibility to combat and you have different modifiers for all types of situations and when it comes to a life spiral when you actually get hurt um, your the damage is taken out of one of your stats so um, if you're lucky you may not end up as um, crippled or disabled or incapacitated as fast so you may just suffer some a bit of a penalty to your uh, strength or to your attack rolls in general or to your defense but there's a, a pretty good chance but that's other um, aspect that makes this uh, game really gritty and, and quite real if the enemy gets a lucky shot you may end up incapacitated and, and later on destroyed you may even uh, get, a, get some long term injuries you, you have a, a table to determine uh, the kind of injury that you will get because the enemy scored a really good hit and, and you also get a lot of different things such as mm, tactics like um, or tactical factors such as knockdown or knockout you can get magical weapons to use in combat and when it comes to um, the structures there's also a, a rules uh, for damaging uh, for example trees or, or buildings so you want to simulate that uh, kind of like uh, very aggressive uh, violent battlefield um, type of situation you can cause all sorts of explosions with your weapons or with your spells you can simulate everything very well the rules are all here and when it comes to magic this is not a game of subtle magic or or like um, magic that has has very small effects this is for over the top um, warlike spells with huge explosions and damage all around so and you have uh, two different disciplines of magic so you can um, according to your style to what you you want to accomplish and there's a very good selection of spells uh, for, so for example you could be a, a wheel weaver which is based on, on gaining fatigue point, points the more spells that you cast the the more tired your character will become and there is another uh, type of, of spell casting which is called the, the harness or the harnessers which are the ones who, who cast these types of spells they basically spend fury points uh, to cast different spells and and keep spells going as, an, as a sort of upkeep you can also use uh, those points to heal or transfer damage uh, everything is very well well thought out it's, it's pretty cool let me read some of the spells to you although it's a huge list and they are even uh, broken down by careers so for example we have a blessing of health earth's cradle protection from corrosion or maybe you have earth splitter elemental protection tornado annihilation blackout Raise the dead, uh, fist of worms, flesh eater. You have a blessing of the devourer, vanishing ward, dark water, a fog of war, hunter's mark. As you can see, or you can probably tell from some of the names, you also have some some uh, specific tactical spells to shield you from damage uh, or to give you an advantage on the battlefield. And the spells are divided in like in small stat blocks, so it's very easy to to look at them while playing and get all the information you want about them, how much do they cost in terms of points, uh, their range, area of effect, etc. Everything's very cool. You also have uh, rules for war beasts, and these are, aren't just like animal companions. Sometimes there's a very powerful bond between uh, the war beast and, and your character. So, if, for example, if you get knocked out or something, there could, there could be a backlash as the psychic connection between you and your and your beast is severed temporarily and you also have uh, a huge list of, of gear, of different weapons and it, it's a very um, um, varied selection because they are not just primitive weapons you have uh, metal uh, armaments and, and armor and, and you even get some firearms or chemical equipment, um, ingredients all sorts of adventuring gear so you don't feel limited by the setting, it, it actually feels like um, they mix and match everything that works, worked better in, in the um, Iron Kingdom's uh, Full Metal Fantasy RPG, here you, you get the best of both worlds. 
And it makes sense because, for example, in the Iron Kingdom's Full Metal Fantasy RPG, you had like uh, 350 pages, but this book is 481, so they added a bit more stuff. That was a good choice. And the Beast Theory, the Beast Theory is very good. One of my criticisms um, about the other uh, Iron Kingdom's RPG core rules uh, was that there weren't enough enemies, although they uh, added some free... Um, downloadable beast theory later on here you have a lot more enemies and there they have that um, like um, stat box so you can uh, read all their stats and special abilities very easily you have enemies such as the common Argus or the moonhound Argus you have the uh, black hide or the bogrin the bone swarm the fog drake the Feral Geist, the Scarsfell Griffon. It's a very good beast theory. It has a nice amount of, of different enemies and NPCs where your characters can fight against them or, ju or just interact with them. And they have a, a nice variety. They don't feel like, like they're um, fixated on a specific theme. They can fit in many different types of situations. And you have a very excellent chapter on, on game mastering. If you have never played a role-playing game before, this PDF explains everything pretty well. You have uh, different rules about the essentials of, of gameplay, how to build stories, how to create NPCs pretty quickly. You even have some creature templates to make the, the task a bit easier. And as I was telling you, at the end you get some templates and gameplay tools and a model gallery because I was telling you this game works better with miniatures and Privateer Press has a very nice selection of, of miniatures, probably some of the best miniatures I've seen in a while so you, you, you may consider them if you like playing with miniatures you should definitely get them for this game because this game could be played without miniatures but you will be uh, wasting all those rules for tabletop gameplay well, let me tell you what I think about Iron Kingdom's Unleashed RPG Core Rules. Well, I think this is, this in a, in a sense, I think it surpasses the other, uh, the Iron Kingdom's Full Met Metal Fantasy RPG. Although both games are good, I really like what they did with the Beast Theory here. And maybe it's just a personal preference of mine, because I like um, a lot of, I don't know, gory, raw and savage themed games. And I, I really like the feeling of, the, of this this RPG and all the monsters that you can play as, the monstrous races more specifically, and it's just a very complete book, you have everything you need to play here, and any other expansion that they release based on these rules is, is going to feel like it's going to add to this game rather than, than completing or that something was missing, because this is a very complete book. So you should definitely get it. I, and I think some of you may be wondering, if I have the, the Iron Kingdom's Full Metal Fantasy RPG uh, game, core rules, is this book worth it? And, and I think it, it is worth it because uh, you have uh, a lot of additional information. You can build some incredibly epic, massive campaigns that uh, maybe d during some adventures you're in the city and then you travel all the way to the savage wilderness described in this, in this uh, PDF. It definitely adds a lot more to, to the game with in, in terms of theme and in rules and everything you, you can uh, combine. Uh, both RPGs are compatible. The Iron Kingdom's uh, Unleashed RPG is compatible, completely compatible with the um, Iron Kingdom's Full, Man, Full Metal Fantasy RPG. So you're going to get a lot more careers, uh, more weapons, um, different spells. This is turning out to be a a huge, uh, a massive RPG by combining all the, the different elements of each game. So you should definitely get um, Iron Kingdom's Unleashed RPG Core Rules. It's pretty good. It's definitely, it's probably one of the best RPGs when it comes to combining that feeling of, of miniature miniatures war game with a traditional RPG. And, and I don't know, everything just feel ber feels very action-packed. Well, thanks for watching my review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. See you later.